both of us at a starting great uh, magical. Okay, how about now? Check one, two, one, two. All clear. Isabel, check one, two. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think we have an ABL distortion on there. <laughs> yeah, this is the bailing twine uh, band aid mishmash of applications we have to use to ensure that we get a nice. Uh, non non disrupt undisrupted uh stream in discord recording in progress all right hello everyone good morning Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be tuned in from around the world. Uh, super excited to be back for another Discord office hours, Max 9 focus. Uh, you know, Max 9 is still very much uh, hot off the press. We're all still diving in and discovering all the wonderful new possibilities that, that Max 9 has. Uh, I'm very much excited about it. Uh, at this stage, I'm guessing some of you have already heard about the new ABL, ABL.objects, which are a, a port. And a lot of DSP code has been ported over from Ableton Live. Uh, some of it one-for-one -one translations, and some of it are smaller pieces of DSP code taken from specific de devices, uh, and we get that beautiful functionality uh, and there's also the classics like uh, Saturator, uh, Ableton, Ableton's RAW device, uh, Drift, the synthesizer in you know, all its glory. Uh, and I'm very excited to have Isabel Kapriski here. Welcome, Isabel. Hello, Tom. Isabel uh, is an engineer here at Cycling74, and she did all the heavy lifting, right? Basically, of um, porting all of this code, and it's a lot. How many, Isabel, how many ABL devices in total are there? There are 10 devices and 55 of the DSP components. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, I still haven't explored all of them, and there's some real incredible, like, you know, uh, they're not secret. They're not a secret anymore, but, like, <laughs> names that I'm not familiar with, like Top. Top is a classic. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like a classic 808 uh, sign generator or like pulse generators. There's some incredible stuff in there. Uh, so these, in some sense, these are a little, in, in cases like Drift and Raw, they're kind of a higher level building block. Uh, something, in a sense, we call a higher level building block something that's a little more uh, feature filled. Uh, some creative decisions uh, have been made with the objects. So something like Drift, Drift is a perfect example. It's a, essentially a fully fledged polyphony synth uh, with modulation built in, multiple filters, multiple oscillators within a single object. It's It's quite incredible to have something like that in Max that you can just simply pull in, plug in some MIDI, send it to an, an easy DAC, and you have a, a pretty pretty awesome sound. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's so much to explore in here. Uh, I think we're going to start with uh, taking a look at a patch here, Isabel. Are you down? Yeah. yeah so yeah. Isabel has the, the ABL system patch, which was... You've possibly seen the video from the Introducing Max 9 page. I'll post the link here in the chat. And here is the video. Whoa. 
And I'll also post the patch, but you can just uh, kick. I'll post the patch after we take a take a peek at it. Uh, we'll we'll totally try maybe answer some questions along the way, but we all have a dedicated question time for everyone at the end. Uh, that'll be in about half an hour to forty five minutes. Uh, I'll try to keep. I see uh, Groove Mechanic Robert has a question here. Um, yes, that is a good question. Um, it is the. Uh, all I can tell you off the top of my head without pulling up code on my screen to tell you an answer, so I won't do that. <laughs> I'm going to be sharing Ableton stuff, but uh, it's a it's a DFM. Uh, I'll I'll increase Isabel's volume. I can do that. Yeah. Okay, Isabel should be a little louder now. Yeah, all I can tell you off the top of my head is from the name. It's a it's a DFM filter. I think it's might there might be one from Super Collider or something. I don't even remember what it stands for. I can come back to you with an answer to that though. Um, but there, yeah, <laughs> it's one of the the DFM is one of the filters in the meld oscillator. I think it also might be used in some other places too. It might be in part of Echo. Um, hmm. It might be C sound. Yes, actually, I think that is what it is. Um, ah, that's cool. There you go. We're all learning stuff already. <laughs> Where <laughs> is the DFM filter object from? Nice. Yeah, I remembered that because there's there are two. One of the things, just to start off with, like the fact that we don't have um, all of we don't have like the uh, um, what am I thinking of the soft tube stuff. So the filters we do have are like the DFM was a re-implementation of the C sound filter. Yeah, at the moment, uh, it's I can answer this question, Julian. At the moment, there's no plans to move any ABL stuff to to Rainbow, but it's not to yeah. say that it won't happen. But there's there's no plans right now. We're focusing on Max Nine at the moment. Yeah, I can answer a little bit more about that too in that little bit, but why don't I can pop up the patch on the screen while we chat? Yeah, let's let's do a little screen share. Hopefully, we can even walk around the patch a little if if you yeah. like, Isabel. Yeah, so that's that's probably a good good way to start. Um, let's see. Where do, does anybody have any suggestions of where they want to start at? Maybe maybe up in the top mm -hmm. left there. <laughs> We've got, uh, you know, it's, it's essentially starting out with a live step to do the melodics and then uh, the live grid on the right is kind of like a pulse pulse generator. And the first thing we're going into, the play MIDI subpatcher is essentially just, you know, pulled straight out of the uh, live, uh, the... Life. Oh, yeah, the help patch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, except I added uh, quantization. <laughs> so, I did, so I didn't need to put in perfect notation. Nice, nice, nice. But, yeah, we're, we're then just sending the MIDI down into the drift object. Uh, drift, in this case, has a few parameters set up uh, as attribute UI objects, the unison, uh, 32 voices... Uh, low pass, oh no, thickness. Uh, some of this started being made before the param connector function. So that's why there's some attribute <laughs> UI objects in here still. Nice. I think if I'd made it from scratch, there wouldn't be a single attribute UI object, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the param connect feature. It just makes life easy, especially with something like drift. Um, there's something yeah. about although you still have a lot of parameters, it seems just more manageable. You know, and and something about when the attribute is an actual dial, somehow it's less. Uh, you know, when they're all attribute UI objects, they kind of start to all look exactly the same. And then it's just a kind of classic uh, subtractive path, in a sense, uh, into a redux. Uh, worth mentioning, too, that I, I 
I mean, I'm a big fan of Max's Degrader, Degrade, classic, uh, you know, bitrate down sampler. And um, there's something interesting where Redux does something similar, but it does it differently. Like, it has another type of sound. Code is definitely not a one for one. Yeah, the weird thing, or like the funny thing to me about like the ABL objects is like some of them like did start in Max. Like I think I'm thinking of Roar probably of like all these different stages. So like they start in Max and there's all these pieces of Gen that they were developing and developing the objects or in developing the devices. And then here we go. It really is like going back into the. <laughs> yeah, we've like, gone really full go full circle. <laughs> Yeah, I actually have seen the, um, I think you have, you have too, I've seen the uh, raw Max for Live device, which yeah, is yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> which is essentially just a big gen, gen patcher, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I love that, I love <laughs> that, it's pretty funny. I love that it started as a gen patch, got ported to Live DSP and came back to, <laughs> came back to Max as an object. Yeah, like... I, it makes me think of the fact that I spend so much time making tools to make music uh, that it's just like, oh, I'm going to port this thing to this place and then I'm going to port it from there to here and then I just never end up making anything. And so like, that's like such an important part. And like after the release of Max 9, I've like actually gotten to play with the stuff that I've been working on for, I don't know, or like everybody's been working on for a while. So yeah, it's, it's, it's really nice. No, it's, it's pretty cool. Um... I mean, the next thing down from Redux there is utility, which, you know, not that you couldn't do mid-side right. processing and, you know, m you know, moving moving something to, to make the low-end uh, mono or something like that, switching face. But it's really nice to just have one object that's just a straight utility object that it's a little bit of a Swiss army knife uh, mm -hmm. as a max object. Yeah, what is it that I also I find myself using the actually the DC blocker in it all the time, and it oh, just yeah. feels like so. Sometimes it feels like like this is overkill, but like it's just so nice to be able to have everything all in one and like panning and yeah. Yeah, I think it also it touches on this interesting aspect of ABL where, you know, I think I've I've seen some people talking like, oh, this is like great building blocks for new users, but I also think there's just something about. Like, I've caught myself already just being like, oh, I want a nice soft clipper. Let me just grab Saturator, uh, you know, and knowing that it's just there and you can pull it up super quickly. Um, I'm not, I'm not, the pra all the naming is all set up and all I need to do is make a few live dials and assign them. Yeah. I think, like, usually I'm the kind of person that likes to build everything from the bottom up and have it and, like, I'm like, I would think I'm that kind of Max user, but like, as I've become, like, just, I don't know, been programming longer in my life and doing different things, I'm like, more appreciative of being able to go between having something that is higher level while I work on another piece that is lower level without having to build like the entire thing. Like, I love being able to configure things and going deeper into something. I like having the option there, but I also like when something like just sounds nice to start with, because like, if I'm going to be building a sequencer or something, or I just want to like mess around with some like MIDI, like the MIDI side of things. Like, I don't really want to worry about making something that is like making my ears bleed <laughs> while I'm testing it out. You know, like it just gives you more options. And I don't think there's really anything. I feel like Max is like never been a place where it's like, oh, we have an opinionated. You need to do it this way or something. And so it just kind of feels like an extension of that. Yeah, yeah. I think it. I think it keeps the max philosophy going, where you know you can do, you you, you know there's fifty ways to skin a rabbit. Uh, uh, there's one thing there on the left, Isabel. I wanted to mm -hmm. just touch on, and actually, I I'm curious too. Uh, mm -hmm. ABL DSP Shimmer. So mm -hmm. we know that that I know that's a reverb. It's one of the algorithms from Ableton's hybrid reverb. How many, I, I actually haven't done a count, how many of those algorithms from Hybrid Reverb got moved over? I want to say five. There's, let's see. Tides, Prism, 
shimmer dark fall shimmer and quartz and then yeah there's the and then there's the device reverb right which i think is like just the uh semi-generic plate reverb and that one's interesting compared to the algorithmic ones because it is in, um let's see it it goes from a mono channel to a stereo ah reverb um that so is not okay that's not the reverb reverb device no it oh it is yeah ah um yeah this is the plate reverb at least that's what it is called within the abo right uh generate pseudo stereo output for mono input yeah so i find that's a nice way to add in some if you're starting out with like I don't know, like if I'm just like patching stuff with like the mono oscillators, um, it's like a nice way to just give yourself a little bit of stereo space. Yeah, that's a actually that's a good tip. I I didn't uh, I didn't know that it it was mono in stereo out. Um, yeah. I've been appreciating the the hybrid reverb algorithms. It's someone who's a little adverse to putting tons of VSTs in a live performance patch. You know, I kind of like to, pr I prefer to keep it, you know, vanilla um, for, you know, safety reasons, for future proofing, for ensuring, uh, you know, trying to minimize the areas of failure. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. I've um been subbing out what you know some reverbs and things and 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 the likes with the shimmers and the tides and yeah they sound they sound excellent. Yeah, I agree. And like I haven't tried yet trying to do anything with like using the like the his tools package which is basically I basically consider it being like built in but like adding that convolution half to it and then you can like really build your own hybrid. Reverb in Max, which is always an option. Yeah, uh -oh. yeah. I I have heard some good reverbs done in Gen. Um, mm -hmm. s the ones from Fours are really mm -hmm. good. Um, S has put in some great work there. I'm trying to think. There's some other folks who've done some really nice um, Max for Live reverbs. The, have you ever seen? There's a post on. The blog for Valhalla DSP, where he talks about how the which is it super massive the free the like the one that's purple um, <laughs> that one was originally prototyped in Max in yeah Max for live but I think he did it just using like all pad like I don't even think he used Gen which I just I just love that um, but I don't know if you can get the patches from that but I think um, but I'm like pretty sure uh, that is there's pro there's something out there probably. I think he even gives away one of his reverbs on on fours. It's a free device, um, ge generously sharing the code with the community, which is really nice. Um, yeah, I think also he has some stuff. S had some stuff in his GitHub as well. Um, yeah, cool. Okay, uh, so what what do you have a favorite? reverb algorithm from the ones you ported over um i'm a i'm kind of a sucker for shimmer reverbs <laughs> um i like i like i like the you know adding a like 12 12 semitone up but what else so i don't know i think tides is kind of like a low-key gets uh looked over what is it that is in one of the what does the tide modulation do? I can't remember. Uh, does it sit, did I actually sit? the intensity of texture in the reverb tail? Let's see. Mm. I think it adds some modulation to the to the tail. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. It, it, tides to me, if it makes sense, is it, it, it seems a little more plate plate like. Um, in its in its nature as a reverb, definitely, if you're bringing in some uh, rat, you know, very short uh, transient material or anything, uh, it just kind of really emphasizes the the clang, uh, mm -hmm. and it's beautiful. Uh, this 
this little piece here on the right with tides on the far right, mm -hmm. uh, we're running extra tone. Mm -hmm. Extra tone is like wild. I it's like the Mark Fell, uh, Mark Fell <laughs> object or something, or the telephone Tel Aviv object. Like the way it just effortlessly does that kind of uh, you know ratcheting, um, syncopated. It's so Let's much see. fun. Let's see, why don't we play it a little? Bit? I don't know if it'll go through. Let's see, give it a blast, Isabel. Go on. Yeah, here we go. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, but if you if you modulate the frequency, like so, that's what yeah. I'm doing there with the function. I'm running the line in there, and kind of it just does these really nice, uh, yeah, oh, ratchets. We can. I want to hear it on its own. I'm trying to do it here. It turns out so. Like, of course, this is like opening up the help patch, the one that doesn't have the the sequencer in it. I'm looking for it, you know, like. Um, the, the small step sequencer. Have you played around with this yet? This Maybe I'll... Oh, the little sequencer is amazing. Yeah, that was... Uh, was Matthias. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, he added those in. So it should be in most of them, but, you know, move that over next next max release. Yeah, this um, little <laughs> mini sequencer is so... Yeah, S, I have to agree with S. Cute, cute. So cute. That is... <laughs> It's it's pretty great. Um, so let me see. I'm gonna pull up extra tones. I love that with Max Nine, we're like in, in bringing the cuteness. Like it's time to. <laughs> you know. Let's see. Okay. So let me get something going. Don't know that I've ever thought of Max as cute, but I'm ready for it to be cute. What is it, everybody? Cute era. Where we are. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> anyway, I don't know what this is doing. <laughs> yeah, no, it's there's so much, so many kind of creative possibilities in here. Uh, just, just double checking too. All of the inputs, right? All the parameters are audio mm -hmm. rate, right? So we can. Yeah. So this is actually something that uh, I think is like not. Or like it's hard to highlight it, but there's like some stuff. So there's interesting things about the inlets, and um, the fact that all the inlets can accept both uh, event rate and signal rate. So the name of the sequencer is called Small Step. Um, and uh, yeah, so all of the inlets can accept either um, signals or event rate. Um, and if you send it event rate messages, you know how you normally have to like use line tilde to keep things smooth and so you don't get the stepping between yep, the parameter yep. updates. All of the ABL objects have internal parameter smoothing. Um, so like when you do update something via param connect, it's not at audio rate per se, but it is smooth, so it's not getting steps. So um, I think it's a, what is it? A five millisecond um, param smoothing. Yeah. So like, Unless you want it to be like super precise for a certain signal, like you want to, you purposely want to modulate it at audio rate, you can keep things uh, more performant if you are just sending in a regular event rate, um, like float to the, the various inlets. Um, and that was a kind of a, a big step in making things sound um, much better uh, when we were adding in like the Pram Connect stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. I m recall in development prior to us having the audio rate modulation, like uh, when we when we did get that uh, and we did we got it in there, it was it just you know yeah changed everything like the way that mm -hmm. you could interact with these objects. And I think this is also something interesting to think about too, is that while there you know there is this relationship to the code from Ableton that the way the new possibilities for interacting with it in Max are uh, very different to the way you would interact with parameters in Ableton. Yeah, exactly. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so like 
Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so so yeah, folks, I definitely recommend checking out uh, Extra Tone. Uh, lots of possibilities there, especially running uh, different different frequencies into it to um, control the kind of pulse train or pulse generation. There's a lot of fun there. A real favorite of discovery of mine was TARP, just over mm -hmm. on the left there. TARP, abl.dsp.tarp. Uh, maybe kick open the help file. So that's... I don't know much more other than what 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 you've told me in the help file, Isabel, but mm -hmm. um, it is a really great just 808... Um, and who doesn't need a, a nice, clean sounding classic 808 uh, in their lives? But yeah, it's it's a blast. Um, particularly changing the tone, being able to modulate the tone control. You can play around. But yeah, the, I get you know. No, no one can complain about not having a good sub bass uh, oscillator anymore. Not that I ever yeah. heard. Not that I ever heard anyone complain. Uh, I guess we can take a few questions here and there as we're going along. And this is a good one. It seems r related to ABL in general. But uh, mm -hmm. Berlin is asking, like, can you tell us about the rationale behind the naming scheme of the ABL objects? What is mm -hmm. DSP? What is device? Uh, yeah. The yeah, I can answer that. It's like pretty pretty simple. Um, is the if there is a device in Ableton Live uh, that is fully like the entire block, like the device is an object, it becomes ABL dot device dot name of that thing. But if it is a piece of the the device in live, it becomes DSP, which is why you get anything that's like as big as abl.dsp.tides, um, which feels like a big, large, might even want to call it a device, but it is a piece of the um, a larger thing in live. So that right. is like the differentiating factor. Um, yeah, that's, that's the answer. And that's why <laughs> things like Echo, uh, Redux, Raw, uh, drift uh, abl dot device because of that. I think of it more of as a one for one, and if it's if it's parts of a device, right, then it's the DSP. Yeah, um, and it's interesting too because there are like pieces within the code base where it's like their components, like because you can you might have a compressor inside of one of the devices right like inside of drift or whatever there's like internal ones um it's different than having like the device compressor mm. um so it kind of just gives the opportunity at some point to have like a smaller lighter weight one i suppose but um i don't remember the origins of like originally the objects were just like live dot uh name of thing right and then we wanted to have them all be yeah i i like this Naming convention because well I know that it leaves us it leaves the possibility for us to expand on it and not get locked into a corner um, in the future. Yeah, super fun, uh, folks. Anything anything else popping up for you? Any other questions here? Uh, it's pretty exciting. What else have we got in here? Well, there's raw. Uh, <laughs> raw, raw. Somehow, for me, every time I think raw, ABL raw, I I immediately think of ABL drift, just because like as far as two two of the um, most parameter heavy um, <laughs> ABL devices uh, in the sure. in the mix, but yeah. it's incredible. It's so much fun to have raw in in uh, in a patch. Let's see, what does this help look like? I don't remember. Oh yeah, an interesting thing about like the roar. So the difference is like there were two different things in terms of like how modulate like there's the like, internal modulation in roar and in drift, right? But they happen differently. Or, or well, there uh, in roar there's like this 
um, there's a message in order to set the modulation based on it because there's just so many it's like so focused on the modulation that it's like its own thing um, and in this help patch you can grab this handy dandy little thing to set up the message or to set up the, the modulation and like it'd be interesting to see people doing different stuff like to create their own like modulation matrices and stuff like that um, so like I'm pointing this out because like if you look at the, the drift help patch um, the way it does modulation is like formatted a little differently. I mean, I don't know if this is interesting to anybody but me, but <laughs> let's see. Um, oh, I think it's interesting. So there's like, this is the modulation in which you can like just set the sources and the amount and destinations by like set separate attributes here. Um, yeah. Also, it looks like Julian Bayo just posted something interesting in the comments. Um, Julian, I believe what you've posted is a piece of V8 JavaScript code to auto auto connect, automatically connect and assign live dials to parameters. That's cool. Well, that's sweet. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't even gotten to thinking about that. <laughs> So does this does this create one for every parameter, or just some of them? Yeah, I'm not sure, like but um, I I like the idea. It reminds me of the um, it's yet it's yet to make it to V8, but it's in the works. Is the uh, parameter info uh, handler that we have in the old JavaScript that can uh, you know grab all any any um, parameter enabled UI object in a patcher um, and get all of its information. But uh, well, yeah, I think there's so much potential here with the param connect object. And you know, I don't need a million event patch cords connect to an object to to make make my patch feel legitimate. I'm happy for patch cords to not be there and for things to be connected. <laughs> yeah, 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 same here. Like when I was making some of like the very early help patches, I'm sure you remember like the yeah. original drift of like how many patch cords there were. It was just like a whole thing filled with like add or UI. Like the whole I, I, I like think the original, the original drift help file, I, I, it's like you couldn't see anything for the patch cables. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was, it was. I. I don't think I'd ever seen so many patch cables in in a uh, such as you know. There was only like three objects in there, but the, <laughs> you know, <laughs> apart from the outer UIs, but like yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. This per, the Param Connect feature is is for me. That's what really was like the cherry on top, like the icing on the cake, so to speak, for. The ABO objects, and obviously the Param Connect feature is not uh, fixed in that it's not that it's it's not only for ABO, but for other parameter oriented objects like PolyGen, and I believe this functionality is planned to be extended further too um, mm -hmm. in the future. So that's very exciting. Um, there's an intuitiveness to it that wasn't because I did spend a lot of time with ABL before Param Connect came. And, yeah, it just added this very nice fluid uh, intuitiveness to working with the objects. I particularly like it for things that are like enums, where you don't want to have to type out everything. You have to go through and look at every name of everything, and then you have to make sure it's hooked up, and then you have, and like, and everything, and if anything ever changes, that, that is like, to me, is like the, it's my favorite, favorite use of it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah. Uh awesome. What else have we got in here? Let's see. Yeah, I'm looking through. So yeah, there is two drifts. One is one is doing the baseline, one's doing the one's doing the, the lead slash melody. Uh then up the top there to the left we've got some more Reverbs, we've got Echo. Echo is, so, I mean, it's so cool that we have Echo. It's such a great uh, Ableton mm -hmm. Live device. Oh, here. Uh, it's super nice to have that. 
Where does the ABL, oh, Rabbi does another question. Where does the ABL DSP modal resonator come from in live? Um, I want to say the meld filter bang. One of them here, let me, why don't I pop it up? Let's see this. Um, I don't Yeah, some some reason I seem to recall you saying it was yeah it was meld. Um, yeah, there's a plate resonator, a membrane resonator. Those are different though. Those are resonator. Interesting. It might be one of the oscillators. Hmm. Um, anyway, it comes from meld. <laughs> it's from meld. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, what else is in here? So there's a question here about the difference between the ABL device limiter and Lemmy. And Lemmy was, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can correct me on this, Tom, but it was originally a thing that was from, or that was like just a Tim Place built. It was like a Tim, like Tim a Place, Tim, Tim Place, uh, sometimes known as Tap Tools, uh, was a big developer of um, Plugo plugins. And also a long-time employee at Cycling74. Um, Tim, I believe Tim coded Limmy uh, for for his own plugos originally. And it wasn't, it actually wasn't in the Max distribution until I think sometime in Max 8. I'm not sure it was even in the original release of Max 8. I think it came with 8.1 or something. Yeah, um, I think it was like because I know of it from like the min, yeah, stuff, and I think it just got moved over from that and put into the main. Mac yeah, you're computer. right. You're right. Now I recall. Yeah, he was. He had the source code in the min dev kit, and if you downloaded the min dev kit, it was already pre-compiled, and people were doing that, and so many people were doing that that he got decided to put it into the the main distro. Kind of like mean thread check. Yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. It's I think those are the those are the two big things because I was originally like you remember I was like doing package manager stuff. Yeah. Um, and min stuff, and at the time it was like uh, we were trying to deprecate people downloading from the package manager because <laughs> of some issues with like one of the patches, like in something. It was a whole thing, and uh, but those were the two objects that that people would write in and ask. I I also feel like the uh, the Apple Silicon change from Intel to Silicon forced us to make a few decisions there because like people were like my my Limmy from Min Dev Kit's not working anymore and um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we were like oh okay I guess enough people want it we'll put it in the distro um, yeah Limmy is a classic and it also made it over to uh, Rainbow which is cool. Um, but yeah, I be they're pretty different limiter algorithms, right, Isabel? You've seen yeah. the you've seen the back end. Yeah, I've seen the insides. Um, yeah, they're like let me tell the is well. You can find the code on GitHub from the min dev kit. It's still there. Um, it's it's fairly fairly simple and, and pretty bare bones. And the limiter from Ableton is not uh, bare the bones. <laughs> yeah, it, it has a lot more. It has a lot more going on. Um, so I, I would, I don't want to call it like higher quality, but like it has a lot more. Uh, it's, it's what you would expect from the Ableton limiter. Now it just has more parameters too. It gives you, I think it gives you more options. There's like, um, I can't think off the top of my head. There's like different smoothing. Yeah. Remember. But yeah. No, uh, high harmonics. I wouldn't say more robust would be a fair fair thing to say it sounds like uh, we're we're kind of discounting <laughs> Limmy yeah. I think I think I would say something like it's more uh, it's just had more engineering done on it and more more f more coding put into it yeah, um, I would just say more capability is probably the better way yeah to yeah <laughs> it's uh, yeah it's it's yeah Limmy's perfectly robust it's not going to give you any issues um, but yeah it's probably like, uh, yeah. Uh, Belin has a good question here. I, mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure how much we can we can speak to this at the moment. Obviously, 
It's only been two weeks since <laughs> since since Max Nine kind came out. I think honestly, we're really lucky to even have Isabel here. I'm surprised she's able to function. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so talking about future roadmaps this early is a little tricky, but um, we definitely. Yeah. I know we intend to extend ABO. Um, yeah, I can say more about it. Like not like super. Like I can't tell you like oh and. You know, like two months we're gonna. No, no yeah. timelines. No, no timelines. timelines. But I can say, like, I can, I can generally talk about like what I know won't come through. Uh, just based, I think it's useful to know. Like, I'll finish my, I'll finish my thought here, which is, uh, I'm in the original Max Nine Discord, um, like release kind of office hours. People asked about there are certain devices that are just not going to be able to be made into ABL objects because of the way the Ableton code base is. Like ABL objects come from an internal Ableton library called ABL um, that like is used throughout Ableton's products. Um, and certain devices like operator and analog, just like unless they are ported into this library, like it just isn't feasible to create these objects without having to rewrite every piece of it. Um, but that said, like, like most or pretty much every new thing that is added into live is added into like this library. So like, um, as live like grows, this library can also like these objects can, like could feasibly also grow just unless there's like other things like licensing or um, just other like incompatibilities. Um, like that I like don't even know about because they don't exist yet. But like there are certain things that are in live still that haven't made into the ABL um, package and they are on the roadmap and aware of them. Yeah. There's also some like smaller other things that I know that would be cool. Um, but yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, what was the thing I was thinking about? Um, I think the other one is like the stuff that's not going to make it is anything anything you see with AAS or the likes inside yes. of Ableton that is a collaborative device in that Ableton has secured, you know, a third party uh, code from another developer that's not going to it's not going to make it to uh, to us. Yeah. Um the legal stuff is not 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 under my purview, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, it, you know, honestly, it's probably not impossible. Uh, I never say it's not impossible or not not possible, but uh, it's it's certainly a lot a lot more uh, a lot more hurdles would need to be navigated for that to happen. Yeah, and like I could segue a little bit into like answering the. Like both, so that's like a good way to talk about like both the UI stuff and the Rainbow integration. Those are like two questions I've seen. That I yeah, yeah. When bit. do we get it in Rainbow? Um. <laughs> like from a technical standpoint, it's again, it's not impossible for for like this. To, it's just the way Rainbow works. Uh, if you've ever like poked under the hood, like it is its like own thing, and like integrating this other. C, C++ library into it would be a huge effort. And, or, and then also the questions of like how like export and there's just a lot of questions there where it's like, it's not impossible. Like it is like, I could imagine a lot of effort going into it to being feasible, but that's why, that's just why it in this current release, that's why it's like that. And, and the like, other interesting aspect there, and I could see that where Ableton I you know I I don't think they would feel uncom they don't feel uncomfortable about obviously ABL being in Max whatsoever but the second that someone can export parts of their code as a plugin to a piece of hardware to you know other mm -hmm. other other unknown worlds you know that that adds almost this legal implication or yeah yeah and yeah, and like to the other piece too, um, of like the UI that I mentioned, like that is also not part of like the ABL library. Like the ABL part is the DS, the core DSP, and the UI is like all the other stuff that goes into having Note or Live or whatever um, that uses the DSP that everybody's familiar with from all the integrations, right? Like um, the UI is like written in like a completely different way, and it's not the same way that Max objects are written. So like 
no, it's not impossible to rewrite their UIs and stuff, but it would like you'd have to write. It's it's just yeah, like um, but like also, I find it kind of like not really necessary in 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 a lot of cases. Like part of the the nice bit of having the DSP separate is that you can make your own UI and make like do whatever you yeah. want with it. Yeah. Um, and especially like going back to like the Param Connect feature, like. Like it's like super easy to just like you can just like create your own macros like you wouldn't in a device rack in Ableton, right? Like Yeah, yeah. You made me uh, think uh, about something. You mentioned that, you know, obviously that we have access to anything that's made it into ABL. So things like operator, which is much more of a legacy synth inside of Ableton is not it's not part of the ABL code base at the moment. Is the um do you, you might know this, maybe not, but uh, mm -hmm. do you know what does Note use? Does Note use parts of the ABL code base? As far as I'm aware, that's sort of part of why it exists. Is right. Like, it was part of a whole modernization effort, and so um, they needed to have a library where they could be more portable. Ah, um, and interesting. So I think if you so like if you like when you're like exporting from Note, I don't think. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I I don't know like that it actually exports anything that uses operator or things like that. I'm not entirely no sure. no don't no. Quote me on that. It's like, no no. Those things are definitely not in there. It's only the much more modern synths like drift and and the likes. Um, yeah, you just made me think about uh, something. I did see that the most requested. We're going on a slight tangent here, but the most <laughs> requested feature of uh, Ableton's move the new hard piece of hardware was operator. Um, and yeah, maybe, maybe it does get ported to ABO. Um, <laughs> the people have spoken. The people <laughs> have spoken. Then we can, yeah. And that talk about another full circle, uh, moment. If we were to get operator in, in ABO, I've seen the operator max patch, uh, Robert's original prototype. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was fully a full operator was a fully fledged uh, max patch. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like the thing about operator um, is like it's the UI that is so nice about it. Like you yeah, can, there's like we have like I mean now there's like so many different FM like. Uh, yeah. Already in like for you know, for and, operator like, can, since yeah. yeah. And it's like you can make your own. well. There's like there's the questions of like well, how do you do anti-aliasing and things like that, and how do you make like good sounding quote FM synths? Um, like, yeah, I mean that's its own its own like uh, rabbit hole. But but um, I, I yeah, operator's great. It just has enough functionality there to be able to get into some really interesting sound. You know, it doesn't have anything more than it needs, uh, and you know. Compared to a lot of modern synths, you could even call it minimalist. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but but it's still a classic. Um, and I just think because it was one of those first kind of synths inside of live that there's just so much legacy uh, content out there, packs, presets. It's in. Um, it's got to be inside of millions of Ableton live sets. Um it's it's just a mainstay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think actually um if I recall it was it was um operator that really was the first thing to really kick off the uh like preset sample marketplace in the context of like the whole Ableton Live community like Wow. Yeah. It was the first thing I really recalled people selling preset packs for mm -hmm. in in wow, the light in the world of Ableton. Um, yeah, the, it was a one of the big groups was why it was. I mean, maybe you know this guy Isabel Andreas Wedderberg. You've probably familiar. seen him. In, he's he. You've probably seen him in the forums, um, but he had yes. a he had a group called Covert Operators. <laughs> <laughs> and they were prolific. They were prolific for like from 2006 to 2010. They just released so much stuff. 
It was insane. Man. Um, what well, was really funny, because Wedderberg is actually a really good Max programmer. I never understood why they didn't transition to making... They made a few Max for Live devices, but while they didn't fully flip to the Max for Live marketplace type scenario. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's still around. Um, he pops up in the forums here and there. I think he's even in the Discord, but he's not very active these days. Yeah, Andre, he's a super nice guy. Um, he did a, He has a group. I forget what his group's name. Uh, Beautiful Goblins, maybe you recall. Uh, he has a group. He's a whole. There's like a whole group. It's not his covert covert operators group, but he has this whole group of um, performers, and they did this insane performance at Ableton Loop. I think it was 2018 or 2017. But it was it was out it was incredible. It was like the best multi person max performance I've ever seen. So there were like seven or eight people around a table, all with um all with laptops, all running Max, but they were all synced. So mm. they were all talking to one another through their patches. And it was it was wild. Like the audience w went the whole yeah, it was it was memorable. Like I, you know, entire loop, everyone from loop was there. It was like a thousand people, and it was, it was, <laughs> the whole place erupted. Like, yeah, it was very cool. Wow, that's one of those things where you like you wish you had a recording of those. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, I I think I did take a couple of small video clips maybe i do have some photos but like the table was an, a massive laptops and various midi controllers but like there was just this weird strange cohesiveness to the whole performance and it was so cool to see all these <laughs> max patches that i had no idea what they were doing but the, their screens were full of different weird uis <laughs> custom i love made. the idea of like of like having a fake UI, like one that just makes you think all this stuff is happening, and like, oh, like, yeah, <laughs> you know the classic, uh, the uh, you know the the classic. I almost hate to bring these guys up. Oh no, no, I know. I mean, I know it's coming. <laughs> you know what's coming, right? Like the the classic uh, fake UI legends. Uh, you know, it's like this, this patch, I'm going to post it in the chat. Um, and there's a few others from them. And, and Sean, uh -huh. Sean has um, declared many times that like, what, sound on sound, we're doing an interview with them or something. And they're like, can we see the patch? And so he made a, he made a <laughs> fake UI. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite one is um, there's a Nortec patch where it's just got a whole bunch of color swatches in it. <laughs> <laughs> and I love this idea of like Sean or Rob like moving colors around while they're playing and <laughs> just. As if it's doing something. Just changing you know, like, the. Well, how are you playing? I'm just changing the color of my triggers while I'm playing. What if like. I think it'd be so cool that like if people took those patches that like are totally like one person makes the UI with no idea what it's actually doing and like tries to make it as impossible to turn into a, like an instrument and then or like some sort of like rig to use and then like somebody else has to figure out some way of like turning that into something usable like in a sort of different like uh, like you know people passing along remixes. To no, no, that's a great one. idea. That would yeah. be fun. Like, what if that was a challenge or something? Like, here I'll give you like this UI. You have to make it do something. <laughs> That'd be a fun, fun game. A little bit like that's a bit like the uh, what? What is the uh, that game you pass around? You fold, you draw something, and you fold it over, and oh yeah, yeah. Like, uh, is it there? Well, there's telephone, and then there's there's like. There's one called Telestrations, which is like you draw something and somebody has to write down what they think it is, and then the next person draws what yeah. that person wrote. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> it's 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 honestly like, I mean, it's like opening your friend's Max patch. Honestly, I'm like, yeah. I my, the first thing that goes through my head usually is like, what the hell is going on in here? Like, <laughs> you know, like, 
it's it's really hard to yeah exquisite corpse exactly todd that's what i was thinking um yeah i mean even this picture julian just posted that i mean that in a sense it's funny because it looks like a max patch like but it's a drawing yes. um yeah there's something to that though like uh and uh yeah deciphering other people's patches is very <laughs> very hard sometimes um I saw some in back in back when I did work tech support at Cycling Twenty Four. I saw some classics like, "Hey, my patch is not working." And you open it up, and it's just like a, a gajillion sub patches and patch cords, and <laughs> no comments, no order of operations. Like, it's like, yeah, I don't know, man. You're like, <laughs> it's like it's it's its own art, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So it can be very re revealing, you know, like, um, yeah. Um, folks, any other questions about ABL? I mean, I feel like I'm having a great old chat here with Isabel. We've, we've gone off on a few tangents now. <laughs> uh, I mean, ABL is incredible. Honestly, I, I'm still just looking forward to having more time. I'm looking forward to the upcoming holidays to just sit back and not, uh, to be able to like you know create with it uh not that i haven't been making stuff i mean we we made a bunch of these patches and stuff like this but like for me it's like when i can get it and put it into my own my own sound my own art um then it starts like oh making sense i have plenty of ideas on leverage leveraging some of this um mm -hmm. yeah um, yeah. Do you have a favorite? Do you have a favorite, Isabel? Is there like I was just thinking, like okay, so I have like a few that I think are like hidden, hidden, uh, not hidden gems, but like you might not notice is like really useful. Like, oh I'm, yeah, I'm tell it, tell us about some of the the ones that yeah. are not immediately obvious. Like you know, honestly, I did just stumble onto top. I had no yeah. idea there was an eight oh eight generator yeah, in so. there. So, okay, so if you go to the extras menu, let me open the monitor here. I am glad, though, if I type 808 into Max's search, top is the first thing that comes up. Yeah, so that, let's see. That's good, but you need to know to type 808. Uh, folks, did you everyone see how Isabel pulled up this just now? It actually is very useful. Um, so it's just up there in extras. There's a dedicated ABL DSP objects uh, patcher underneath extras, and that can be very handy for just pulling stuff up and exploring all of the objects that are here. Yeah. You um, you all have that in your Max 9 installer. Yep. Um, yeah, so some of the ones that... Um, yeah, and if you click on any of these, it'll open up the help patch and you can play around with it. But some of my, uh, like, ones that I like playing around with are the modulators that come from Meld. So many things come from Meld because of the way, like, it just, like, exists. as like, a bunch of, you know, you have so many options and you just... Um, uh, and Meld was there. one of the newer... Meld's mm -hmm. one of the newer synths, too, I imagine. So the DSP code's right there in the ABO and available to us. Yeah. Um, there are these, there are like the modulation sources within like the modulation matrix in MELD, and there are a bunch of these different uh, modulators. So there's a RAM, um, there's a Euclidean sequencer, like mm, generator. Euclidean. Yeah. Um, but let me, I could show you on RAM here. So, like, okay, so on the first tab, it shows like the basic use of them. And um, let's see. Watch me crash Max. <laughs> um, I probably have like. Am I running the, the debug build? No, I'm hearing nothing. Let me read open. Um, but it has like basic a basic tab which shows you. Oh, I know what it's. Open it again. Oh, yes. 
Okay, so there's this um, there's a ramp generator. You can change the frequency in the first inlet. There's also an attribute for it. Um, but Ooh, let's see, let's make that's it. cool. And so there's different. You can just easily get like useful modulation sources. Um, mm. And these are like these are like things that you like. Okay, this wouldn't be so hard to make, but also like. I don't know. It's just it's so it just seems so useful to me to have these like very like fairly simple shapes yeah. that are like have really useful like macros. And then within it also there's a there's um, also there's um, transformers that you can apply to them. So within each of these, like if you look in live, you, you'll be able to see this as well. But in here you can see there's you can have two effects added to the modulator in oh, or, like in that's series. Cool. And so, like, there's this uh, an offset, a ten inverter, a gate. You can like sl slew them and skew it, unipolar, bipolar, and stuff. And there's also like, uh, I think triggered envelope is pretty cool. Um, some of these like make more sense on certain uh, or certain shapes than others. But yeah. like, it's super useful to be able like to just like s swap it all the way to being a bipolar signal, or like make it all the way to being unipolar. Like, here, let's actually I'm gonna do that. It's this you could take one. this too and just flip it on its head with um, modulo or uh, multiplying modulo subdiv uh, rate. There's so many, yeah. so yeah. many pulse, you know, pulse algorithmic trigger possibilities here. And there's also let me show a few of those. So there's also ESP um, dot modulator. So these are just basic shapes, though. But like here, you got you just got like got an LFO you can stick it to do like you know it's just super <laughs> useful I think oh man that's awesome that's cool so like that one let me let me see what other ones there's also alternate uh which is like low-key like kind of kind of great because like let's see it literally just alternates between two values but like with all the extra effects you can add on to it, just built in right there, it's like super useful. Yeah, I didn't, I hadn't even like looked at this. You can add DSV. a slew to it. Let's see. Um, fade in and fade out. Like, I just, I don't know. So these, these I think are, people should check out. You might not necessarily. And there's also a, a random, random walk. Oh, yeah, um, sweet. Going on. So. That's cool. Would recommend these. I think. Is there anything else in here that's like? Is there any know. Perlin noise or? That's a good question. I don't think so. Yeah, um, I was gonna say I haven't. I don't. I don't think I really struck anything <laughs> like that in inside of Ableton either. Yeah. Um, I saw that there's somebody had a, a cool V8 patch that used it like very recently. Uh, I actually Facebook. just made one myself the other day, but um. Nice. Yeah, I was thinking more more audio, but I'll throw it down here. Um, yeah, it's pretty pretty fun. Uh, here's a little V8 Perlin noise. There's also an L system in there too. Um, yeah, V8 makes things so much so much better. Yeah. And like these filters too. I think I like have spent a lot of time thinking about like all the oscillators and the different. Um, like in the, like the bigger, I guess, uh, devices, but there's also like just really nice filters in here too. Yeah. That are just like, they've got everything you like need at a high level and then you can- Right, like, you yeah. It's nice, it is nice to have a few more like vanilla, <laughs> you know, vanilla uh, good sounding filters as a po like not that I don't like biquad or one pole or <laughs> resin or resin. I, I, would never talk badly about those objects <laughs> um uh but yeah it's nice to it's always nice to have more right i mean um mm -hmm. and yeah being especially the audio rate modulation param modulation is kind of kind of really cool for doing some getting into those weird audio rate filtering whatever worlds like you want to get mm -hmm. into i think that i'm really curious to start throwing a bunch of these together you know the ramps and mm -hmm. the alternates and have them modulating filters in abl and yeah yeah things that i'm like excited about 
like in my own like messing around with stuff is just like how do you make like a a super meld or something like can you make an mc meld by like just putting together the pieces and making certain parts like uh just like you can have like 16 channels of it or something like that or like um have instead of having only like three stages available how do you make something where there's like seven stages or something yeah like, just yeah. kind of making things go crazy in the way that you can with max you know Folks, I hope you were listening carefully just now because Isabel just low-key dropped some magic. <laughs> uh, ABL is MCable, so you can have an mc.abledsp.raw at channels 512. <laughs> let's, let's, and let's, um, okay. you might <laughs> open up a porthole to another dimension. Yeah, where, we, where do we go? Like, you can easily have your Euclidean generator in, in MCable. Like, I don't know. Like, what does that even mean in some of these cases? <laughs> I don't really know. This is like, this wasn't even, um, I haven't played around with this a lot. But like, so the, like the swarm oscillators in in Meld, I, I think they're they're great. Um, but uh, like, they already sound like they're like, you have some MC with some little bit of deviate applied to it. But like, what if you took that? In, in yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, that's another possibility right there is some, some, yeah, I, I can't imagine. Okay, we're definitely going to open some portals up to other dimensions, no doubt. Um, <laughs> that or uh, a sinkhole, um, too many roars. What what did he die of? He <laughs> 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 um, yeah, it, that's that's cool. Uh, Shimmer I'm saying B Sweet. Oh wow, Belin, that that's that's cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm seeing the Shimmer, I'm I'm seeing any of the the able reverbs. I'm sure would be very interesting. Um, and I imagine you can deviate too, right, Isabel? Mhm. Mm yeah. yeah. So that's so, where like, the magic would be with, I think with, you could literally have a drift and probably go for a super unison or something um, like, would the, that the work? The devices are not yet MCable. Ah. It's the DSPs because they're all just using the wrapper. Right, it's, right, it's right, right. It's a little weird. Okay, gotcha. then you get gotcha. like this, the stereo is a little, like it's weird to have like the concept of MC having like a left and a right channel. Got so, you, like, got you, the, got you. Yeah. Kind of like have to work around stuff, but you can, yeah, you can have all of these are MC wrapped. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's there's a lot of possibilities there for creative, creative, interesting, uh, creative outcomes for sure. Uh, I'm gonna put that on my uh, <laughs> on my holiday list. Um, <laughs> Zhongli shimmer verb times 512 channels. Hit up Tom's gum road. <laughs> That's quite, quite the Christmas jingle. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this is cool. Uh, Isabel, this is really great. I mean, I'm learning stuff about MC here and I've been staring at these objects for a while now, but I think this is the case for a lot of us that cycling is that we're all being off in our own little spots uh, bringing Max 9 to everyone else. And, you know, now we get to dive in, just discover more ourselves, keep keep developing it. And, um, yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. Yeah, uh, like, I'm, I'm, like, watching the JIT GM stuff and, like, I'm like, whoa, whoa mind blown, along with everybody else. Like. Yeah, yeah. The Jet Giam stuff is fascinating. Uh, I yeah, another spot that I'm excited to to explore more. Uh, folks, the Jet Geometry stuff we did just mentioned. We had Rob Ramirez last week, uh, head of Jitter Engineering, uh, on here lot this time last week. That that is already available in the YouTube playlist. Uh, this call will actually be up a little later today, um, if you'd like to. Watch it back again or send it to a friend. Uh, any questions for Isabel while, while we have her on the line? Um, it's a good time right now. Otherwise, we might wrap up here shortly. We've 
We've put in a solid hour now. Isabel, this is awesome. Um, is there anything else that uh, comes off the top of your mind regarding ABO? Like anything um, at all? I mean, I feel like we touched on a lot. Yeah. Um. A group mechanic has a good question here. I was curious a bit about this myself, and I know some of it, but like, yeah, for you, what was the process of converting this stuff? Like, what, what did it look like? Uh, yeah. Um, did you work direct? You you did work straight from the ABL C code, right? Yeah, it's the ABL code is C plus plus, and um, the ABL objects currently use uh, the min API uh, just for ease of wrapping. Um, wrapping the the ABL code, and so like each of the objects essentially like creates an instance of whatever processor exists in the ABL code, and then on top of it, it just wraps all the the different like functions that are available. Um, that like in live you would see it as a macro or whatever, but like um, in like in the min code, then it's just like, okay, we create this object, we create uh, an attribute, and then we call this function. And like, maybe we have like, and then there's like the adding the smoothing or like making sure that there is all of the like, mixes, like the mix parameters available or whatever. So it's a lot of like, um, it is a lot of just wrapping of ABL code. Um, but I did get a chance to like, unless a lot of the debugging ended up being like, Oh, why is this? Why is this suddenly blowing up all this like code? Like, shouldn't this just be fine? But it's just like, oh, the the ranges have to be like set this way. So like finding like ways in which the so I did end up like I've like poked through quite a bit of like the actual processing that happens on the ABL side. But I like there's so much props to the Ableton work that has gone into like like making these DSP algorithms and stuff, and that's like all. All on that side, but yeah, that I think that maybe that answers some of the some of the question. Like, yeah, um, there were gen patches that like existed before the creating the ABL code, and then the ABL code got like ported into like into these objects. Um, so like I didn't necessarily have like I don't, didn't necessarily work from the gen patches, but that actually like could have been part of the process. But yeah, but I think if I'm not mistaken, it just made more sense given where we were intending to take the code, right? It just made more sense to work from the ABO C++, right? Yeah, and that's how it's, like, easier to, like, it's it's easy to keep it in sync because it's just, like, okay, well, whatever's in ABL, that's what's in But we, we, did, we, didn't, we did do a little more than just wrapping, right? I mean, we had to do some stuff right. there to make the parameters run at audio rate. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was a lot of work that went into creating, like, essentially like a generic wrapper around ABL code so that you can plug in like whatever processor nice. and then how it like smooths the parameters or, yeah. So it's to answer this, the follow-up question, it is like 98% of cases straight one-to-one. -one. Like there's cases where like um, it makes more sense to have like rescaled some of the inputs, like in the case of like the FM base tilde, like that oscillator. Um, internally it has to like change the octave of the pitch so that like it is the actual MIDI note because when you're playing it in live it like internally drops it down like two octaves or something and it kind of just didn't make sense to leave it doing that so like there are some cases where like small adjustments aren't made but they're not like mind-blowing math going on like or whatever right um, the the general Ableton user who came over to Max probably wouldn't know or even realize that that change is in place right cuz like we've mm -hmm. kind of made it back to parity in some sense yeah. with with the device that exists in in live yeah and that's also a reason for a lot of the cases where um there are certain values, and again, I'll go back to Mel because that just shows up so much of where like there's the macro values of like it's it's at a normalized range of zero to one. So like that's the reason for a lot of the inlets being like mm. max zero to one because that's just how it is in the Ableton code. Right, because live does do that uh, normalization in places and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but I had noticed zero to one in 
in quite a few places um, where I think typically uh, if we made an object in Max, we probably might not use zero to one. Yes. Yeah, Right. exactly. Like coming to mind of like zero to one and some of them is like, uh, like, I mean, like talk about one of them, I think it's crackle maybe one of like the, um, yeah, this might be a good example of like where a zero density isn't really zero density. Like, I don't think it actually becomes like, yeah, it doesn't Right. actually become zero. Like, um, but that's just because it, it's parity for the live, for Yeah. the live code. I think this makes sense. Also, I just like the, I love this idea of like seasoned Ableton users um, being like, you know what, I'm going to make the mega device now and I'm going to make it in, in Max for Live. And um, yeah. Yeah. For these questions about, is it possible for the oscillators to be driven by a phaser instead of frequency? Um, off the top of my head, I'm not sure, but I think, I actually think could be possible. Yeah. Actually, hmm, I think it really depends. I'm not sure. Feature request. <laughs> Feature request. All right, folks. Uh, Isabel, thank you so much for spending some time with us here in Discord for the office hours. Uh, I think I speak for everyone with saying how much we really appreciate your work here. Uh, the ABL objects are incredible. Uh, they're very exciting. I think there's a lot here for everyone. Um, and I, I see that. I see that from the folks who are here in the chat. You know, I see some seasoned Max users. I see some new faces. Uh, I think there's a lot here for all of us to explore. And I think there's something cool about, you know, leveraging these, trying something, right? I kind of would use Beep or even Visi like this, like just something quick. I want to try something. I want to put it in a patch code. I don't want to... spend five days pat coding up this thing from scratch, <clears throat> see if the idea works, and then I can go off and make my own nuanced reverb or modulator or whatever. Um, but you can immediately see the potential uh, by having objects like these. And then, yeah, if you want to make your own uh, reverb that has your special DNA on it, then you can. And I think that's that's the beauty of them. But I really like this. Like, I think there's something here for everyone, which is which is pretty cool. Because like sometimes uh, it's not always the case. Uh, sometimes you need to do some other stepping stones before you can dive in. But ABLs, I think, is one of those rare exceptions where I can see people from all different backgrounds uh, getting something out of it. Yeah, it's a middle Yeah. ground that just wasn't there before, I think. Yeah, it's very exciting. Um, cool. Well, folks, uh, any last questions? Oh, yeah, Robert has a good point. Groove Mechanic. Yeah, it's cool to test out your own stuff against Ableton's DSP stuff. Uh, that's a good idea. I hadn't even thought about that. Rob, uh, everyone should know Groove Mechanic, uh, fellow Australian down there in Adelaide. Um, Make some incredible Max for Live devices. Uh, I'm, it's nice to be able to have an afternoon Discord so our Australian friends and, and others off there in Asia can, can drop in. Awesome. Uh, any reading advice? Yeah, all right. We normally keep that question to uh, your regular Discord office hours, but Isabel, I think you did drop some good books on us the last time you were in office hours. Um, That's cool. Here, let me, I'm also, I'll answer uh, the question before I Oh, answer, yeah, I see Robert has one uh, more the latency. question here, yep. That is a good question. Um, the latency, there's no way to measure it. Like, there isn't, like, uh, any outlet that's going to tell you the, the latency of these objects. Um, so I think I would have to get back to you on that. Um, it might be... Um, Because that is that is that does make sense to you need to be able to define it in your own math life. But yeah, I'll get back to you on that and uh, take a look and Yeah, I'd be curious on that too. Maybe Isabel, you can drop back into the Discord later when we um, when we work that one out. Yeah, because as is, you might have to just 
measure it yourself and then, you know, um, there's no way to auto report that right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's probably what I would come back and suggest. Um, but yeah, it, to go back to the other question of reading advice, um, do you mean, like, are you thinking of, of, uh, books? About or... the ABL object, or do you want to? C++ plus plus code? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've got a whole, sh I've got my shelves of books that, you know, like, you open and you've read, like, five pages of the book, and they're very useful, but you have it so much. Um, have I gotten anything recently? Oh, I mean, this isn't really ABL, but, um, have you seen the, um, what is it called? The Alan Strange Electronic Music, or is it Systems and Signals? There was like a reprint of it that came out on Kickstarter. Like they did ago. a reprint? No way. Yeah, I've got a copy of, and I have like a PDF too. I think they, I don't know if they still have them, but if I have a link to that, I mean. Because that was, that. um that Alan Strange book for was out of print for a long time, and I remember that copies of it were, yeah. was selling mm -hmm. on Amazon for like $400 and stuff. Yeah, I got a copy for it was like, 50 bucks. I don't know if they're like... Oh, no anything. way. That's it, it cool. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put a link to the Kickstarter, but... I, I didn't know, know that they did a, a... I didn't know they did a reprint of that. Yeah. Wow. That was this. Um, they might, like, still be selling the PDF. I don't, I don't know the details. I haven't looked back at it, but... Um, you can always email the guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, super cool. Wow. Well, I'm glad someone asked you, because I wouldn't have... I did. I missed that one. Um, cool. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. You don't need to drop anything more, Isabel. We're, I'm not sure my wallet can handle it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> folks, uh, this has been really great. Isabel, thanks. Thank you so much for taking the time to, to come and talk with us all about ABL. Uh, we'll definitely have you back in the future, maybe for a regular office hours down the line when we've got some more stuff to talk about. Uh, <laughs> folks, this this reboot of Discord office hours, this is a Max 9 focus, and we're going to be continuing this more for the next few weeks. Uh, we have a few, we obviously have a lot more features of Max 9 to talk about. Uh, I'm very excited to say that next Wednesday, so a week from now, 10 a.m. Pacific time, so it's not so friendly to Australia and, and, and uh, our friends in Asia, unfortunately. Uh, it will be at 10 a.m. We have Joshua Kit Clayton. Uh, he's a C CTO of Cycling74 engineer. Um, Joshua did all of the work for bringing V8, JavaScript V8, to Max9, as well as all of the code box, literally everywhere, code box everywhere. <laughs> Um, so all of that new functionality, along with a lot more, Joshua will be here with us next Wednesday, 10 a.m. Pacific time. So that's the 20th of November. Uh, I'll make an event. It'll be up in the next few days. I'll post about it in general. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, it's been real. Thanks, Isabel. Thanks, everyone. See you all later. Isabel, stick around a second. Bye, folks. Thanks.